Thanks for coming to dance with me. I'm Laura and today we're going to work on jazz improvisation for beginners. is one of the things that makes jazz jazz, one of the things that makes jazz dancing jazz dancing, and one of the pillars that is a commonality throughout a lot of African American art forms. But improvisation can be super intimidating if you're a beginner. It looks so complicated, I mean where do you even begin? Hopefully this is a good beginning place. Big thank you to the people on Patreon for helping to make this video free for everybody in the world, including people like you. If you want to join them, the link is in the description. First, improvisation isn't just out of the blue, although sometimes it looks that way, it's based on the things you already know. So what do you know? What are all the different jazz moves you know? Fall off the log, basic Charleston, tack Annie, boogie drop, boogie forward, boogie back, many boogies, siskumbumba, half break, full break, all of the moves from the shim sham, hitchhiker, there are moves that you remember, and they have names, and so they can be listable, which is super helpful if you're new. So step one is, can you recall the jazz moves that you know while you're in the middle of dancing? Can you play a song and move from one move to the next move on the phrase change, just like people do whenever they're doing a warm-up before class or something like that? Can you do that? If you were leading a class, would you be able to choose different moves on every phrase? Okay, what moves do I know? What moves do I know? Fall off the log. Okay. All right, what's the next move gonna be? Think, 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 think. Oh, I got it, I got it, boogie drop. Oh, okay, boogie drop, I thought of one. All right, what's the next move? What's the next move? Uh, what other moves do I know? Uh, basic Charleston, make it look good. All right, what's the next move? The next move. Oh, tack Annie. Oh, thank goodness. All right, next move. Uh, think of something, think of something. Mm, uh, Siskumbumba. Oh, I love Siskumbumba. All right, what's coming up next? Phrase change is coming. Mm, uh, I'll just do a lunge thing. Oh, this feels good. It's not a move, but it feels good. I'm gonna do that. The beauty about this is it's an easy communal thing that you can do with your quarantine pod or with people on Zoom. Can you lead them into a dance? If you're not sure, I suggest you try it out. Okay, now you remember some jazz moves. Now you have to make those jazz moves beautiful and make them look like you. Don Hampton was this amazing musician and entertainer and she has two quotes that for me summarize a lot. One, you can have no freedom without discipline. This to me talks about you need to learn the technique of the thing. For example, you can't be a great jazz musician without running some scales. Jazz didn't just pour out of these people and I think it's kind of insulting to assume that it did. These people worked at it. Being a really good dancer is no different. You gotta work. However, this is balanced out by the second quote, if you only learn the steps, you're only stepping. She was good, right? If you're only running scales, you're not playing music. After you learn a few notes, you want those notes to sound beautiful. And after you learn a few moves, you want those moves to look beautiful, to feel good on you, to be musical. These two skills might seem like they're at odds, but to me, you wanna build them up simultaneously. If you wait until you have technical perfection before you infuse your personality into something, it will never happen. You will never be technically perfect. Why? It's a moving target, but that's okay. That's part of what makes Lindy Hop so special and wonderful. However, don't just abandon the technique because you feel the music. Maybe you do, but it probably won't come out of your body without some focused attention. So what should you do to get better at this? Well, there's no one way of working at it, but consider just taking one move or a sequence and trying to dance them a whole bunch of different ways. Use your shoulders, use your arms, use your hips, use your knees, use your ankles, use your head. Dance it to music that's really slow. Dance it to music that's really fast. Dance it to music that's really bouncy, really smooth. Dance like you're a teenager. Dance like you're royalty. Find out what your body likes to do and find out what you feel matches different songs and different moods. All right, you know how to pick different moves? That is great. Now, can you transition between those moves 
beautifully. You don't want it to look like the next move scared you and that you weren't sure what was gonna happen. Especially if you're leading a jazz warm up, the people watching you want to know that something new is coming up and that they should pay attention because your body movement has just totally changed and you are preparing yourself for the next movement. Take a look at these examples. Important, this is just my style. Experiment to find out what feels good on your body. So here I'm transitioning back and forth between basic Charleston and tack Annie. On the transition from the Charleston to the Tack Annie, I'm really trying to make the contrast, that height. I go up and then drop down for that Tack Annie, and that should make it more obvious. To go back into Charleston from the Tack Annie, instead of continuing the Tack Annie on the eight, I start kicking on that count seven, and that redirects my momentum. So instead of being in place for that Tack Annie, it shoots me forward for a nice, strong forward kick for a basic Charleston. Next transition is fall off the log into a boogie drop. Check out the version on the left. I'm making that transition more dramatic by circling my arms and jumping onto my left foot. By centering myself on my left, my right foot is free to boogie. The next example is from a piece of choreography called Trickeration. The rock sequence has a lot of horizontal movement. In the left version, I'm prepared for that movement on the lunge. In the right version, I'm lunging in place so the horizontal movement is irregular and kind of stale. Okay, so now you can pick up moves, dance them well, and transition confidently. Now just see if you can do all that faster. Every two eight counts, every one eight count. Think ahead, make a decision, go for it. It's not about cycling through moves because this is still dancing. You're still dancing to music. And so see if you can still pay attention to those phrase changes. Now we're really getting somewhere. All right, now you can boom, 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 one eight count at a time. Boom, boom, follow the log, tack Annie, boogie drop, siskum boom ba. Now see if you can cut those moves into tiny pieces and weave them into each other so it's like one new move. It's the fall off the siskum boom boogie Annie. You can also use whole sequences of moves, also known as choreography. When I first started improvising, I knew the Shim Sham, the Big Apple, Tranky Do, and so my jams were very reminiscent of those things. It's like I took those choreographies, put them on cards, and then shuffled them all up and restacked them. Which is fine, it's a stepping stone on your way to more fluid improvisation. So here we have a little piece of the Big Apple, Tranky Do, and Trickeration Reloaded. <laughs>
reshuffle them to make whole new two phrases. spice them up using different variations and rhythms and things like that. I have a few different videos on changing up basic moves with rhythms. Feel free to check them out. You can even break away from basic moves entirely and make up something that's completely new. Seriously, improvisation goes on for eternity. My one piece of advice is when you break away from those moves, make sure you come back. Those basic moves with names were invented at the same time as the music we danced to was invented. They are made for each other. They are partners. And so coming back to those basic moves will always reconnect connect you to the music. And it will give you and your audience something calm to settle back into and to groove into. I hope this video was helpful. If you liked it, click like and subscribe. The algorithm loves it when you do that. If you like the music, check the description. If you want merch, check the description. 50% of the money that I get from this channel go towards organizations that support African diasporic art forms because that's very, very important to the identity of Lindy Hop. It's a black dance. And of course, the best way to learn how to dance is to dance. See you next time.